Hey, good morning everyone, or good afternoon now. This is Pastor Chris coming to you live from PC Studios. I hope you're having a great day. It is July the 16th, 2020, and today we're going to learn what it means to be content in the Lord. So, as we begin this study, I just want you to know um, we're talking about a surrendered life and talking about ways and how we can surrender that may not be what we usually think about but things like worry we talked about disappointments we talked about rejection and today we're talking about being content an attitude of gratitude so we want to go through and uh, just prepare our hearts for this we're going to open a prayer so this is a time for prayer share and care if there's anything you need to share with each other this is gonna be a good thing something great that's going on if there's a care that you're aware of in the community or somebody needs help or somebody needs prayer, or you need prayer, go ahead now at this time and and do that. Uh, anyway, that this is the opportunity, so we need to take advantage of that and do that. So if you are here with me today and you are in need of any of those things, I'm going to check in now on Facebook and see if anybody's writing anything in. Hello to everyone. Yep, Michelle and LC, O-H, and I know you just said I O. So we got Sherry Melody, we got Kathy and Ray, hopefully we got Annette, we got the Heplers, we've got Paula, we got uh, Sandy, hold some back, hey, welcome back, we got Jessica with us, praise God, all right, listen, Trish, I see you're out there too, so good to see the audience uh, signing in, checking in, I don't see any specific prayer requests, so let's go ahead and go to the Lord, and let's pray. Uh, Father God, we just love you, we thank you for this day ask you to watch over us, be with us. And Lord, as we talk about being content, that's not easy. There's a lot of things we've been talking about this this week that worry us, concern us, that distract us, disappoint us, even dealing with failures and rejection and just feeling dejected by the world and by others. If we're not careful, that can really get into our psyche and really affect us to not live as positively and courageously as you've called us to live. So today as we speak of being content, may it be something that we really surrender our lives to so that we can be content in all that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, you guys, so listen, this is, um, I'm enjoying this study on the surrendered life and enjoying teaching on these concepts. Um, They're so important, so, so, so important. So let's go ahead and open to Philippians chapter 4. Great, great book of the Bible. Um, Has a lot of stuff in there to help you focus your life on the right things. And so we're just going to read a part of it. But um, the whole book of Philippians, but especially chapter 4, is a, a chapter to read when you have stinking thinking. Whenever you're not thinking... The way you know you should, or you're making bad decisions, or you're you're having a pity party, you need to turn to Philippians 4 to get a reality check from the Lord. So anyway, let's read chapter 4, verses 11 through, I think it is 12, just verses 11 and 12 is where we'll focus on today. So let's be a part of that. Uh, if you're not there, I don't have the scripture on the screen, but I'm going to read it down here. It's on my screen. So I don't say this out of need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know how to make do with little. I know how to make do with a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need. So to be content... To be content where we're at in life. Now, this is not settling for mediocrity. This is not settling for status quo. This is not um, compromise or saying God doesn't want to do great things for you or or God's favor is not upon you or God doesn't want to bless you. Listen, we want all that. Listen, I don't think being content is God's intention to suppress us or break us or or crush us or make us, you know, oh, poor me, you know, and just and never be anything in life. God wants us to accomplish great things for him. He's a great God. So I don't want you to ever, like, feel like 
being content means that I settle for less. That's not it. Being content is understanding where you're at in the moment and accepting that and knowing that is good. You can live there. So Paul's saying, listen, I, 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 I learned what it's been to content and whatever circumstances come my way. Because listen, there's going to be things that are going to come our way where we need to learn to be content. Life's going to be hard sometimes. Life's going to be difficult. Persecution, prosecution, martyrdom perhaps, violence, famine, bad things happen. We're seeing in our world right now a virus. So I learned to be content. We need to be content right now in the midst of what we're going through. This doesn't mean it's good. It doesn't mean it's okay. But I can be content in whatever circumstance come my way. I can find this inner contentment within me that God's given me. Listen, what I found through this virus is a lot of people are not content. A lot of people are are not living life, <clears throat> I think, fully as God would have them. I, re- I really believe that. I believe there are some situations right now that the Lord has has brought to pass. People are not living in contentment. Um, they're living in fear or they're, they're living in defiance, and that's still going on. Listen, that's still going to happen. And I'm not saying there are some things that we should be rightfully afraid of, but not overwhelming like in the fear that's spoken bad. And there are things that times where we should be defiant and against it. So, But in whatever circumstance we find ourselves right now, we are to be content. In any and all circumstances, the secret of being content knowing whether I have little or I have much, whether I'm well-fed or I'm hungry, whether I'm in abundance or I am in need, that I have to learn to be content where God has me. So how do we do that? I I like to use this thing, an attitude of gratitude. Um, If you've been around church long, you have learned the song, count your many blessings, name them one by one. Do we count our blessings? So today, right now, right now, I want everybody to stop what you're doing. What are 10 things you are thankful for, you are grateful for, that bring, that you can be content? What what are, what are, what are, what are 10 things? Now listen, this is not going to make your top, go ahead, type them in, start writing them in. Go ahead. I, I need to see the screen going. I need to see people engaged in this is this is a practical exercise. My wife, my life, my health, my children, a roof over my head, which Monday I actually got a new roof put on. The ability to do carpentry skills. I built a, a front deck. You know, the comfort of air conditioner and having ceiling fans. This comfortable chair that I'm sitting in, I'm grateful for. Technology, I'm thankful, I'm grateful for. The Word of God, my salvation. Man, I could go on and on and on. Things that we are thankful for will help us to be content because we know we're blessed. And listen, this doesn't mean I have everything I want in life. It doesn't. And I'm going to say something that's going to rock your world. I am content in this virus. Now, I don't like it, and I struggle with it, and I and I go through, I, I, I pray and I process what to do with it, and, you know, how do we guide the church back through this? Do we go inside? Do we not go inside? Do we stay outside? Do we do, we do this? Do we do that? Uh, do we do baptisms or not baptisms? How do we do the Lord's Supper? There's all kinds of things. But what I'm not content with is canceling church. This not forsaking the assembly of the body of Christ. But I'm content in the fact that this virus is real and I'm okay. I'm not, I'm going to have an attitude of gratitude. I'm going to be grateful that I can still meet on Sunday nights. I'm going to be grateful for digital worship. I'm going to be grateful for this word of encouragement. I'm going to be grateful for my staff. As far as I'm grateful for technology. So I'm content. I don't want to stay here. This would be one of the things where it's, where Paul writes about I'm if I'm well fed or if I'm hungry or if I'm in abundance or I'm in need. We're in need. I don't want to stay here. But I need to be content in this moment for the Lord. So even in the midst of a virus, we can do that. I found many Christians have not done that. I struggle like probably all of you. I mean, we don't like this. I mean, who likes to wear masks? 
I mean, who likes to social? I mean, we're being programmed to social distance. That's so against how God's wired us. The need for fellowship, the need for human touch. Then these things are lacking now. And that's not good. We don't want to be content and stay there, but we can be content in this moment. I hope that makes sense. That's what Paul's writing about. Paul's not saying it's good to be hungry. Paul's not saying it's it's good to be in need, although that can build character. But Paul's saying that because I'm in the Lord, I've learned to be content in all those circumstances, and so should you. All of us should. So as we think about these concepts, learning the secret of how to be content is staying in and being focused daily, even hourly and minute by minute, on God. It really is. To be focused on God and know that He is your Lord and your Savior and your Master, and and to not fret about things and to take things to Him, to know that He is for you and not against you, to know that greater is He that's in you than He's in the world, to know that the Lord has provided things and will continue to provide provide things, that there's no reason for us to live in worry or dissatisfaction or discontentment. Gratitude. It's simply that. That is what we need to think of. God has called us to be grateful. So it's not always... Listen, who doesn't want to have a pity party every now and then? We all do. Uh, This didn't work out the way I thought it would. You know, or I don't like this circumstance. Or I'm not, you know, I mean, when you look at, and go back to the mask thing, you look at people, I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm against anti-masks. I don't like masks either. But I wear them because I love you. Because I love others. So I've learned to be content with a mask. Be content with a mask. It won't be forever. Be content. Be grateful. I know that's hard. It's hard to do. And, and the mask is a good example. You know, Paul could have easily written... I've learned to be content with a mask or without a mask. It's right there in the Bible. And I know it's not literally there, but it's right there. I've learned to be content with it and without it. Do I want to go up and hug a Nebel or somebody else and anybody else? Yes, I know. Yes. And some have, you know, you know, you know, do, yeah. But I've learned to be content in the fact that I know I need to honor social distancing. So we can take the word of God. It's alive. It's living and apply it right now in our setting. Isn't that awesome the Word of God can do that for us? I'm not making this stuff up. It's right there. But will we have this gratitude of being content even in in cruddy situations like we're living right now? Now, th- this doesn't mean like I have contentment in the violence. No, but I have content in knowing that I know who holds tomorrow, and I pray like with this violent stuff that's going on and all this dis- turmoil that's going on, that God's got this. And even though that's scary and and I don't like that in culture right now and I don't like to see all that's going on, I can be content in knowing that I have Jesus, I have Christ, I have the gospel, I have the word of God, I have a family, I have so many blessings I can start to count. I can add up at least 10 a day. Do it. Go ahead. Take 10. 10 things. Is there any part of your area where you're in your life right now, right now, that you're not content with. Now, I didn't say settle with. But are you content with, with, with God? You should be. Are, are you content? If you're living for God, you should be content with where he has you right now. Now, he may have greater things in store for you. He has, I guarantee you, future blessings in store for you. He wants to get us through this COVID-19. He wants us to serve him. He wants us to be filled with joy. He, you know, so our gratitude comes from God. And if our gratitude comes from God, then we can begin to be content where we're at. It may not be ideal. It may not be the best. Again, this is not contentment doesn't mean settling for less. We should always be striving for best. All right, so don't settle for less. Strive for best. But best is not always, that's unrealistic. We can never hover in best forever. It it won't happen. So can we be content where God has us right now? Can we be content where he's got us in our tent? You know, I like that, like pitch your tent. We got where where we're at. From this day forward, why don't you begin thinking? And again, I've asked you to write in. I saw some of you were. 10 people or 10 things. 
10 people or 10 things that you're grateful for every day. Tens, tens a small number. Surely everyone watching can come up with 10 things. Now, I'm not asking you to focus on the things that are bad. And by the way, there's a reality. There are things you got to deal with, right? But I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you, what are things that you're grateful for? If you can come up with 10, then you should be content. If you can't come up with 10, see me and I'll help you make a list of 10. Because I guarantee you, everyone can at least have 10 things that they're grateful for. So I want to do is, uh, before we end, I want to share a few things during this devotion that were written. Sandy Holtzum wrote, have an attitude of gratitude. Man, how did you know that's what I was going to teach you on, Sandy? You get back with us the first day. Your own statement is a statement I've said many, many, many times, and it's picked up. I don't know if you learned it from me or learned it from someone else, and I don't know where I learned it from, but an attitude of gratitude can change our hearts. You know, some people have written, I am abundantly blessed. I need to be grateful about everything in capital letters. Being part, being content is part of being surrendered to Christ. This doesn't mean we don't have dreams or cannot be blessed. It means we don't have a pity party or say, oh, poor me. I wonder who wrote that. I did. <laughs> anyway, we also have uh, keeping the list of things I'm thankful for every day helps me stay content from Annette. We have uh, Don Haggard. Lord, please help me to be content whatever my circumstances are. And finally, a friend of mine, Joyce. There are, there's a saying I really like. A life filled with gratitude does not have room for discontent. Let me read that again. A life filled with gratitude does not have room for discontent. So how do we deal with discontent? Gratitude. And through gratitude, God will allow us and enable us to be content. So let's just recap. We're not settling for less. We still want God's best. And what we need to learn is to, to have gratitude so that we can be content where we are in that moment. I think if we do that, that's a surrendered life. So as we look at this surrendered life that we're going through this week, you know, worry's not going to help us. D disappointments are going to come and we can't focus on those things and keep us down and keep us not being able to live for Jesus. We cannot allow rejection to put us down and help us to keep us from keep trying. We keep serving. God never said just because you didn't get that ideal job or that ideal position in ministry that you stop. And then today, uh, just because things may not be exactly like you want them, and you, you have maybe reason to have a pity party. Be content. Be grateful. And how do you do that? Start counting your blessings. So I hope today you can walk away looking at your life and giving 10 things, 10 people or 10 circumstances that you're in right now, good and bad. Listen, out of your list of 10, put something that's not ideal. Put the virus in there. Be content in this virus. Put the mask in there. Put social distancing in there. You know, everything's off kilter right now, right? It, it is. Can we learn to be content in the midst of this, just life's not normal? Well, I sure hope so, because I don't want to walk around every day with a dark cloud over my head. I want to be content in the Lord. So I hope you do too. So whether, it, you know, a bad thing happens, learn to be content. By the way, you know, people are going to sick. People are going to die. People are going to have problems. We, we've got to learn to be positive and have an attitude of gratitude so we can be content where God has us. So anyway, I hope somehow today this has helped someone, right? I mean, uh, I see some of you writing things in. I look forward to going back and reading these. Thank you for sharing uh, what God's laid on your heart. And uh, I hope that uh, this, again, will help you have an attitude of gratitude. So listen, this is Pastor Chris, as always. Stay safe. Stay strong in the Lord. Until next time, we'll see you later. Hey, God bless you guys. And uh, again, see you later. Just want to highlight one announcement. Continue to keep in prayer your staff and your church council and deacons as they continue to process and lead our church through these trying times um, so that we can see a better day ahead of us. Also looking at digital worship on Sundays at 10 a.m. Join us at facebook.com slash Lexington Park Baptist. And word of encouragement, 
weekdays at noon with Pastor Chris right here. Join me tomorrow as we continue to talk about living the life surrendered to God. Our final announcements are this Sunday we will have The Church Has Left the Building, 6 p.m., Grills for Glory. Come join us for a tailgate for Jesus. We do practice social distancing and we wear our masks, but come on out and have a good time. And then at 7 p.m., bring your lawn chair, bring a bottle of water, bring an umbrella either for rain or for blocking the sun, and bring your mask and be prepared to come worship our great God. Again, all we ask is everybody does practice social distancing, and if you interact with each other, please wear your masks because you love God and you love one another. So we ask you to come out tonight. If you've not been back to church, listen, what are you waiting for? The church has left the building. Join us this Sunday at 7 p.m. for Revival in Our Midst Outdoor Worship. This week we will meet on the back of the parking lot. We will not be in the front of the church because of the heat index. We will be back by the oak trees and the shade on the back part of the property. So we'll see you, to, we'll see you Sunday night at 7, and we'll see you Sunday morning at Digital Worship at 10 a.m. Hey, until tomorrow at noon, God bless you. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Take care.